welcome, Martin. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Looking forward as well. Well, then let's start by introducing yourself. Well, uh, my name is Martin Nyanzi Maweje. I'm a technical specialist in the field of water, sanitation and hygiene. Currently, I am working with Water for People as a sanitation engineer, and I'm based in Uganda. Thank you. You are a water and sanitation engineer. Did you always want to be an engineer? Well, not exactly. I think my, my journey to engineering school at the university always like followed uh, the flow. There was no particular trend. I was just getting the results and I found myself in engineering school on a government scholarship. Oh, great. So you were just skilled at those subjects and doing well. And then that's where exactly. you, the government oriented you and gave you a scholarship. Exactly. To Physics, math, biology, chemistry. The type of um, subjects that make most people want to run away. That's what you were running to. Probably. <laughs> Great. But it's not all of engineers, all engineers that end up in water and sanitation. It's quite a unique niche of work. Not everybody, a lot of people want to do water, but not a lot of people want to do poop. So how do you end up in uh, water and sanitation specifically, or as a water and sanitation engineer? Well, um, in 2015, uh, when I did finish my undergraduate in, in civil engineering, I did have a job uh, immediately. And uh, having this pride of a civil engineer, uh, actually even back uh, in my hometown, many people were calling me engineer even way before I graduated. So. I did have a fear of getting back home without a job. I mean, they would all look at me differently, like a civil engineer without a job was something unheard of. So I didn't have an option but not to go home, probably to stay somewhere or within the university. I, uh, the option that I did think about first was uh, staying with my then girlfriend. I mean, she was a year below me, so she still had access to a hostel room. So I did work to her and I was like, I actually did tell a lie that I had gotten a job, but uh, the idea is we needed to save as much money as possible for ourselves in our early career. So it was nice that I did move into a hostel room uh, for the meantime until we, we do stabilize together. Okay. The idea that she accepted at the time. So straight, I moved into her room and, uh, and we stayed together. I mean, the nice thing is, even when I stayed in her room, something for about two months, she didn't realize that I didn't have a job because uh, every day, every morning, I used to wake up, uh, dress up very nicely and say nice day to her and, and head somewhere else. Uh, little did she know that I was always heading to the library, <laughs> uh, the university library, where I was like, I had free internet and I would apply for as many opportunities as possible. But uh, also within the time uh, at the library is when I did meet a few people who were into the business of assisting or helping undergraduate students to write uh, their dissertations, to, to write their proposals for a small money. And given that I was looking for money, I, I did start that, that kind of business. So I made some little money, meanwhile, through writing those uh, proposals and, and dissertations. Uh, but then two months, she had to leave her hostel room uh, because she was going home for the December holiday. So she calls me and she's like, Dad will be picking me uh, today, so make sure you come back late. I was like, okay, fine. This is where I'll find the key. So later that evening, I get back uh, to the room. I, I, I got in and I didn't see anything in the room, not even my clothes. So when I called her, I'm like, okay, was this a punishment? Why, why did you carry my clothes as well? She was like, no, I had actually nicely packed your suitcase and put it in the corner. But when dad looked at it, it was like, why are you leaving this bag behind? I mean, you need to take everything home. So there's no way I would tell dad that this is not mine. So we carried along uh, with everything, but don't worry. I mean, he will never know that it's, it's your suitcase, he will not see your clothes. Uh, but then uh, I had to move uh, somewhere. Good enough, I had some money on me. So I just did go back home for about two days. I told him I'm just coming to check out on you. In actual sense, I was going to pick a few extra clothes and the little money I had, I did uh, buy myself a mattress. 
and uh, rent for about uh, two months. I mean, I looked for rent that was affordable in uh, the informal areas of, of Kampala. So I moved there. I, I was happy. Everything was well for 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 about uh, for about a month, and until one fateful night, I think it did rain so heavily, and I did wake up in the middle of the night, like uh, about one two a.m., wow. and and my room was flooding. Uh, I had my small laptop bag in the corner with, with my laptop, with my document CVs therein, and they were all wet, the mattress was very, very soaked. Like, literally, I had nothing left. So this was uh, the turning point. I was like, well, why live in this kind of circumstance when I could be better off at home? So I had to swallow my pride and actually get back home and look like uh, the unemployed uh, civil engineer. But the nice thing is, while I was home, it didn't take two months, and then I, I got an opportunity of, of my first uh, job. And the nice thing is, uh, the job uh, was in WASH. Your first job was in WASH? Yes. And it took a flooding, a flood. Exactly. That showed you, to a certain extent, what water and essentially sanitation means. That's the thing that drove you home. Yes. Things that made sure that you swallowed your pride. Exactly. Has that incident, the entire process of having to face people's expectation of you, having to live in an informal settlement with probably uh, difficult circumstances and not the greatest facility, flooding, then going home, has that affected how, what kind of wash engineer you are today? Yes, uh, absolutely. Firstly, I think I approach life uh, differently with a lot of resilience, with a lot of adaptability uh, when faced with whatever kind of condition. I mean, up to now, whenever I have a challenge, however big, I'm like, this too shall pass. The, the flood came and I did go uh, through it. But more importantly, given that I'm in the wash space, I developed a lot of empathy uh, for people living in such areas, flood, prone areas, for people living in areas where they don't have uh, a good sanitation facility or a good access uh, to water. So interestingly, I do approach my work with a lot of passion. What are you the most proud of in terms of your work today? I think I've impacted uh, so, so many people. I mean, uh, I've done a lot of innovations in, in the wash space. Uh, and that is uh, throughout the sanitation value chain that I, that I take pride in. I, speak, speak to me in language that, that everybody understands, not value chain, not sector, <laughs> not stakeholders, yeah. not yeah. space. What, is, what has that impact looked like for you? What, have you? what are you the most proud of? Well, I am most proud when at least one more person gets uh, a decent sanitation facility. Uh, and, and every day I, I, I wake up uh, to make sure I either contribute to technology development, I either contribute to system strengthening, or I either contribute to building private sector capacity in, in providing a water or sanitation service. What do you want to see in the next few years for yourself? In the next few years, uh, I do see myself as a successful practitioner in water, sanitation and hygiene who has contributed to the development of sustainable water and sanitation infrastructure, but also who is a, a very good advocate for environmental sustainability. Amazing. My last question to you is, what are you in service of? I'm in service of uh, assisting uh, local, subnational and national governments uh, to develop uh, well-coordinated and well-regulated sanitation management services. Thank you. Thank you very much.